Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces, Lesson 5, Wind Design Example, Part 2. And on this instance, we are going from page 134, and it says Diaphragm Design for North-South Direction. And it says, Design the Roof Diaphragm. Determine the diaphragm shear, select a diaphragm, a plywood diaphragm, and calculate a, the maximum cord force in each diaphragm in the diaphragm. Okay, so we're doing what? Three things. Determine diaphragm shear. We're figuring out well, select like plywood. Alright, and then we're also Calculating maximum cord force. All right, those are the three things that we need to do. So the first thing, let's diaphragm shear. Let's find diaphragm shear. So here is your wall. This is in the north-south direction. The reason it's in the north-south direction is because that is where your higher shear is going to come from because of the longer wall. All right, there is your wall. Here is your diaphragm reaction. And you, the way you want to look at this at first is you want to say, okay, well, let's, let's, let's go ahead and put the load on there. So we know that to about right here, it's a constant distributed load. Let's make this dot a little bit bigger, just make it stand out. There's your distributed load to the ground. It's a constant distributed load, and we on the last video we figured out that that is 10.2. This is 10.2 psf, and then from in this point right here is 15 feet. So from 15 to 17 feet, and it's actually increasing to 10.5 psf. And the way I like to look at this is half, about right there, half uh, from the diaphragm to here, and what is the diaphragm? That's what, 14 foot? So 7 foot here, 7 foot here. Half of that wind load from here down is going to be transferred to this reaction. And we can figure that real quick. It's going to be this, let's call it R1. R1 is going to be equal to this load right here times 7 foot. 10.2 PSF times 7 foot equals. And remember, this is going to be per foot. 10.2 times 7 is what? 74.1. 71.4. My bad. Oh, P, not PSF. It's going to be PLF. So you have 71.4 PLF. And that's for linear foot of wall, pounds per linear foot, so linear foot of wall into the screen. All right, and then the second, which is going to be R2, which is going to be our roof reaction. And R2 is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to this half plus anything that's over the uh, parapet here. So that's going to be the same thing. Let's just go ahead and do that, 71.4 PLF, and then it's going to be plus... 10.2, it's going to be plus, that's up to here, and then there's another foot right here that's the same, so that's going to be 10.2 PSF times, since it's only one foot, and then we're also going to add this right here. Well, actually, another way to do this, and I hope this doesn't confuse you, for me, this is easier, where I'll say, okay, this right here is one thing, and that's going to be, we know that it is three foot above here from parapet up. Parapet's three foot, so we're just going to say, okay, that's going to be three foot. And then we're going to add the area of this triangle. Because that's what we're doing, really. We're doing the area of this. And the area of that is 10.2 times three foot. So we're going to say the area of a triangle is one half. We know it's three foot tall. And 
the difference is 0 0.3 PSF. There we go. And that's going to be our answer. And let's see what that comes up with. Say we had 71.4 plus 10.2 times 3 plus 0.5 times 3 times 0.3. And that reaction right here is going to be 102.45. And let's round it up to 5. And that's 102.5 PLF. So now when you take a look at it, there, let me change colors again, the reaction's there, but you're going to be seeing this is 102.5 PLF. All right, and, and that reaction's if for each opposite, equal opposite, but that's what it's seeing, and that's going into the screen. So let's redraw this, and I know this is always difficult, but let's go back to blue to draw the building to maintain it. So here's your building. Here's your parapet. I hope that makes sense. And the way we're looking at it, it's, there's your, your ground. And here is the way we're looking at it. Let's come out over here. Follow that, and it goes on, and it goes on. I believe it's what 151.4 foot. Um, it's a 150 foot wall, but then you have the wall thickness as well. And you can take a look at that. You can do that any way you like. Sometimes I like to just to, to add a little bit of factor safety in there. I like to say, okay, 151.4 or 4333 as uh, what we're using for our span here. But uh, you can look at it either way. I'll see what they did in the and the study guide here and it looks like they what they did is they went with a 150 foot wall so this is the 102.5 PLF and as you can see that's the, that's the way it's, it's looking to this diaphragm and here's the diaphragm right here and it goes on forever not forever but you understand what I was trying to get at and the way you look at that is you take this and you flop it over to where you look at this as the depth of your beam and that is what? What is the distance on that? That's 61.4, and I believe that is the 60 foot. That's the way they're going to look at it. So this is actually a 60 foot deep beam. And if you flop that beam over like so, you actually it'll, it'll look like this. Let's go back to green again. It actually goes all the way to the end. I just am, have a hard time drawing sometimes using this clip. So once again, this is your 102.5 PLF. And all I did is take this and kind of throw it onto its side. And now we have that. So you look at it as a really deep beam. And since this, I guess I'll throw it in green, this would equal this right here, what I drew over there in the same type of thing. So our shear walls would actually be right here at the supports. So it looks like more like a simply supported beam. So you can say, okay, it is a simply supported beam. Now, what are our reactions, which are also going to be our is our is our uh, shear wall shear? And you can go through. You can make it a free body body diagram or do whatever you wish. But if you also know in your steel books, you have those beam equations. And one of those beam equations for your reactions of a simply distributed beam here is WL over 2. And that's pretty easy to go ahead and verify. I mean, if you take this and you say, okay, 102.5 times what we have 150 foot uh, is our L. This is our W. Okay, you have an equivalent load right here. Some people do this type of thing. That's our equivalent load. That equivalent load is equal to the distributed load times the kind of the width of the distributed load or the length of the distributed load. 1 or 2.5 times 150. So this would be 15,375. And that's pounds. That'll be S. And then since it's right in the middle, it's going to distribute evenly to both. You just write that by two. It'd be 
see, seven, six, eight, seven, five. We won't simplify that any further, which I wouldn't normally simplify that to what? Seven, six, eight, eight, but I won't just to show you that it is half. Okay, so if you go over here, you can say, oh, well, well what do we do here? Um, to get this equivalent load was W times L. Oh, there it is, WL, and then we divide it by 2. Oh, WL over 2, that's where that comes from. It's not very complicated. So WL over 2, let's go ahead and we know it's going to be 7,687.5. So now we have that 7,687.5, and we're looking at this roof diagram. That's what we're looking at. So the next question, what we're looking for, if you'll remember, for this diaphragm shear, we're looking at the roof diaphragm shear. What is it going to be? And to get that, you take your reaction, which I guess you can put right here, which is what? 687.5. That's your. Another thing you can look at is that you can say, okay, well, that's also my max shear, which. I won't get into. Hopefully that makes sense, is your max shear, if you take the shear moment di diagrams that you've done in the past, on this type of beam, what it'll do is it'll go up to 7, 6, 8, 7.5, and I hope I'm not confusing you by overlaying this on top of this. It will get to zero right at the middle, and then it'll go down, and then it'll go up again. And that's what your shear diagram looks like. So, max shear is 787.5. So you can put it like that, but I don't want to keep on going, I want to solve this, so what we do is we take our max shear and we divide it by the depth of our our beam, as you can say, or our depth of our diaphragm, which is 60 foot. And we get what, 76.875, 76.87.5 divided by 60, and you get 128.1. And that is going to be pounds per foot. And that is our diaphragm shear. So we'll go up here and answer 128.1 PLF, pounds per linear foot. So check, we've got that. We also want to go and select the plywood. And to select the plywood, actually, let's go ahead and do this max cord force first. Now let's select the plywood first. Select plywood, you just go to a table, which it has, we've already got our max shear, it's 128.1, and then we go to, it's actually reproduced the table that we want to use on page 98, and it's table 23-i-j-1, and um, there's a lot of things you can look for, but you want to go to your max shear, 